Hello, I'm Francis Slay, Mayor of St. Louis, and one of the many graduates of St. Louis Catholic Schools you'll soon hear from. I attended Epiphany of Our Lord Grade School and St. Mary's High School and St. Louis University School of Law. I am grateful to have come from a family that valued education. My parents gave my brothers, sisters, and me the encouragement and motivation to do well in school, and that push didn't stop at home. The nuns, priests, and lay teachers throughout my education continue to challenge me. There's no doubt that I received a great education in Catholic schools, but there's more to a Catholic education than just academics. At every grade level, my Catholic education taught me to challenge my mind, to have a stronger faith, and to act with integrity. It reinforced the value of all people and instilled in me a need to serve. Catholic education today is helping children all across the St. Louis area to be smarter, to be more disciplined, to have more faith. And the proud tradition of St. Louis Catholic schools all started at one of the most prominent landmarks in our great city, the Mississippi River. It would take less than 24 hours to fly from Bordeaux, France into Lambert Airport in St. Louis today, but in 1817 that same trip took Bishop Louis William de Berg nearly six months. The last leg of his journey was up the Mississippi on a steamboat. Missouri was still three years away from becoming a state. St. Louis was a small city of some 3,000 residents in the Louisiana Territory. But the territory's new bishop chose St. Louis and this log cabin church along the Mississippi River instead of New Orleans for his headquarters. Bishop de Berg was an advocate of education. He had served as president of Georgetown College and on one occasion was a dinner guest of President George Washington at Mount Vernon. Bishop de Berg came to St. Louis with big plans for the city. Well, it goes all the way back to 1818 when Bishop de Berg felt if we're really going to help Catholic immigrants, if we're going to develop a strong Catholic church, we have to have a quality education system. So, but imagine that, 1818. Helping him with that mission was Mother Rose Philippine de Chen, a sister of the Society of the Sacred Heart, a religious order he recruited to come from Europe to teach in St. Louis. At the age of 49, Mother Duchenne, along with four other sisters, would open the first free school west of the Mississippi for girls. Back in those days, it wasn't appropriate to even bother with any formal education for girls. The boys were very often sent to the east or even to Europe to be educated because there was nothing for them in St. Louis. And so when there was something for girls that came along, it was just a miracle. The sisters arrived in St. Louis in 1818, ready to set up their school in the city on the Mississippi, but they would actually end up near another river. The bishop was a little bit embarrassed because every cabin and shack in St. Louis was taken, and he couldn't find any place to put these nuns who he knew were coming. But somebody had told him about this wonderful log cabin out in St. Charles that he could rent. It was called the Duquette Mansion because it was the biggest log cabin in town. He told them that St. Charles was going to be the biggest city in America someday and they might as well come on out here and get in on the ground floor of the growth. They weren't too happy about that, but they weren't going to disobey a bishop. They weren't going to go back to France, so they came to St. Charles. Mother Duchenne wrote in a letter about her new home. Divine Providence has brought us to the remotest village in the United States. In the log cabin they rented for what Duchenne called an exorbitant price of 2,000 francs a year, or about $440 today, the sisters opened a free school for 21 girls on September 14, 1818. They also later accepted three boarders to help pay for the school and supplies. But with their log cabin miles away and across the Missouri River from the city of St. Louis, they could barely make enough to survive. So after one year, Mother Duchenne and the sisters relocated to Florissant all with the hope of being closer to potential students. We're in Mother Duchesne's classroom now. She taught the girls in the boarding school, and she'd have from 20 to 25 girls, and she taught the children in the village. Here, with the help of the Jesuits, she also expanded her educational mission to open the first Catholic school for Native American girls in the United States. The Jesuits taught the Indian boys at their seminary, also in Florissant. Mother Duchenne would open a third school in 1827. This one in St. Louis also housed an orphanage and became known as the City House. 
She also oversaw several other school openings in Louisiana before her death on November 18, 1852, at the age of 83. It was just amazing what she did. And at that time, a woman couldn't vote. She couldn't own a piece of property. That's what amazes me most, is the time she did all this in, and the age she was. Mother Duchenne was canonized a saint in 1988. Her shrine is on the grounds of the first school she opened, the Academy of the Sacred Heart in St. Charles. The room where she stayed is located just down the hall from where students still learn, and reminders of the innovative ideas she fostered line the school walls. For example, this speech, written by the 1882 School of Valedictorian on women's rights. She's always been kind of somebody we, will, we look up to at our school, and I know when we go into the shrine, we pray to her. Every November 18th, the school celebrates her feast day with a special mass. We celebrate what Philippine has done. We celebrate, especially here in this place, the fact that this wonderful woman walked these grounds. She's our saint. She's St. Charles County's only saint so far, which means that we've got a challenge in front of us. One day, I hope, there's more than one saint that's walked this beautiful place.